Tommy Reynolds has his gun out. He's pointing the gun. And all of a sudden, I see this woman. They say it's on every single station. They're saying that daddy died. He said there was an accident and um, your father is, is no longer with us. In real life, I'm not like that. And the Mario test was disgusting. One night I jumped out of a car doing 60 miles an hour because I was addicted. Salute, mob tube. Salute, mob tube. Listen, guys, I'm going to skip shout outs tonight. I got a special guest. He's all ready to go, which means I'm ready to go. Tatone, thank you for becoming a new member, my friend. Uh, and let me just read Common Sense 999 FBS. Haven't been able to chat uh, many lives. Hope you have a, I'm sorry, uh, haven't been able to catch many lives. Hope you have a good show and good to see you all here and support the channel. Uh, hopefully I can catch some of the show. Yeah, hopefully you can. All right, guys, I want to get started. So I'm going to bring on my special guest. Uh, you you may have imagined that uh, you know who it is. You, you, you may have a uh, guest, but it's Gene Barello. <laughs> What's up, Gene? Oh, what happened? I can't. Oh, shit. I can't hear you all of a sudden. We were having problems before the show. Uh, try now. Now. I wonder what happened, guys. Yeah. Fuck. I want to start the whole show over. <laughs> uh, it's all right. He'll be back. This happened. We had a problem uh, before the show. Uh, but we worked it out. And then once I went live, you couldn't hear him. I don't know what it is, but we'll see. He's about to beat the shit out of that computer. <laughs> Sally, $15. Looking forward to a good show match. Thank you, Sally. And as you guys know, Sally is one of the biggest sponsors of this show. All right, here we go. Gene. What's up? All right, there we go. <laughs> Finally got it worked out. Yeah. So what's up with you, bro? How you doing, man? I'm doing all right, man. How you been? Not bad, not bad. I had a, I know we want to just bullshit a little bit, but I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask you about, bro. Uh, and I don't know if you talked about this on any other shows or not. Where were you exactly when you were locked up? I was in uh, Four North, MDC. Oh, Brooklyn. you were in MDC the whole time? Yeah. That's no, I went, to, I went to Butner and came back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. MDC is a fucking terrible place, isn't it? Oh, my God, bro. It's like Rikers Island now. That's good you asked that. I haven't talked about that. It's like the new Rikers Island, they call it. Wow. Yeah, fuck that. Man. That's probably the worst federal holding to go to, right? Bro, it's cell phones and drugs and everything all over, but they're killing each other. It's like nonstop violence. Like, it's really bad. It's like all, you got to understand the state now, all the feds is picking up everything now. They don't just take like major crimes. They take anything. So they're picking up like all the cases that would go to the state are coming to the feds now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's a mess right now. The MDTs, they call Baby Rikers Island. That's what it is right now. That's fucking nuts, bro. Yeah. yeah that's, and how long did you do? Like nine and a half months? Eight, eight months. Oh, okay, okay. Um, yeah. Where did the incident take place with the um, Sam, uh, what's his name, Bakeman Freed? Bakeman, Bankman yeah, that, was Freed? The, that happened in Four North. That happened in the uh, in, a, in a house. Oh, okay, and what was it? He was getting, now, for, for anybody who doesn't know, this is a guy who, what did he do? Some hacking and, and stole some crypto or some shit? What, I mean, what did I, he do? I think he created his own crypto. I mean, I, I just, I, the guy's a genius, obviously, but, um, he made a, they're saying he stole billions of dollars. And I even think celebrities what got robbed. I think Tom Brady even got robbed and it's like a lot of money. Yeah, they said he was like, he was on the list of the 400 richest people in America or something. He, he had a net worth. Yeah, he had a net, yeah, yeah, 20 or 40 billion, some crazy shit like that. That's wild. So what, he was getting picked on? He was out on $350 million bail. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> he was out on three hundred and fifty million dollar bail. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah. when he was locked up with you, you were uh, they were fucking with him or what? Well, they were about to start, yeah, and the kid didn't want nobody going near him. Like he was trying to make it like it was his, and he was gonna take money from him. And I'm just like, listen, bro, it's not going down, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. So you fucked the guy up. Yeah, I got. I, I basically had a federal referral. I was telling everybody because I, I initially. When it started, I had hot coffee. I hit him with it. That's assault. That's an assault. And then I hit him and attacked him and then went back and attacked him again. So they were trying to say that that's like an assault, but the feds kicked it back. You don't you don't know if they're going to take it or not. It's like three weeks you sit in the hole, and then mm -hmm. you find out if they kick it back or not, if they're going to give you an assault case or just let it rock. They usually let it rock because they're killing each other in there so much, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, let, listen, maybe uh, that guy will throw you a little something when he gets out. <laughs> Yeah, when he he comes home, he comes home in two thousand. Never worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. I looked at his case, bro. There, there's. I think the fucking prosecutor's recommending like hundred and five years or some crazy shit he like never, that. Never. I told. I sat down with him, and I told him they assigned you the worst judge in the business. They gave you eight prosecutors. You stole money. That's the worst thing you do in the feds. Fuck killing somebody. Fuck doing all drugs. When you steal money like that. They're coming after you. You're going to get a lot of time. They're going to give him the same time. Not the same time as Bernie Madoff, but he's going to spend the most of his rest of his life in prison, probably. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. That's wild. And none, mm -hmm. of, that, none of that money's going to mean shit. Well, he didn't spend it anyway, because if you talk to him, he didn't buy nice things. He had an Apple Watch and a Toyota Camry. And the only thing that he, he wore, he dressed like Adam Sandler, like a home, like, you know, Adam Sandler is. He's very, like, um, casual. Yeah, he dresses you like never a know bum. That's how he dressed. And he actually said he wore basketball shorts and every day drove a 2020 Toyota Camry and he lived, but he lived in a $30 million um, Bahamas penthouse. Jesus Christ. That was it. That's the only thing he spent money on. He said no jewelry, no cars, nothing. No, just traveled all the time. And that was it. Well, I looked at a picture of him. I mean, he doesn't exactly look, you know, fashionable. He don't get yeah, he's he's, <laughs> he's from California. When I met him, it was so he, he He's a not harmless guy, but he's super weird, bro. Like, super weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what's up, man. It's good that you did that for him. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm I'm sure. that Was that an MDC? Yeah, oh, yeah, that was an MDC. I actually beat up the kid that killed DJ Cal's nephew. Remember when DJ Cal's nephew got killed in 2015? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm the, that's the guy I fought. He's the one that shot DJ Cal's nephew in the head for his chain. Oh, shit. Yeah, get deeper. <laughs> that's, a, that's for uh, your second book. Yeah, you know it was crazy. So um, <laughs> he thought he, he thought he was a tough, he thought he was a little blood tough guy. You know, I don't know. He, he must not got the memo because everyone had told him like you picked the wrong kid. So whatever. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So what? What? Like as far as your life, you know, outside of there, where were you? Were you uh, be able to save money and shit like that from your business and all that shit? Like yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, I was doing, I did all right, but you know, I just having a lot of, lot of. When I came home, just a lot of headaches going on. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get back to normal. I'm trying to. I had a little slip up, but uh, I should be all right. You know, I'll be back. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. It's, it's not what people are saying it is. You know, they're making me look like. Uh, I beat my girlfriend up and stuff like that. That's all bullshit, but whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I, I'm not even going to ask you the story and stuff, but I hear people jump into that conclusion, and it's just like anything else on here, bro. When they don't like you, they're going to find something to say about you. So when you get uh, something like that happens, oh, my God, they, they fucking have a field day with it. They love it. Well, you know, you got to understand – the, the the case is pretty much going to be dropped already. I mean, from what I was told, she called the prosecutor and said, like, basically, like, it was her. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, really? like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So people don't know what they're talking about. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. So you won't, she, she won't catch a charge either? No, I made sure she didn't because that would have been a bad one. But in the meantime, you guys can't go anywhere near each other, right? Well, yeah, we don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen. I, I wish you the best of luck with all that shit. What's going yeah. on with uh, the Johnny and Gene show? You going back? I don't know. I mean, like I said, right now I'm, I'm going show to show. I mean, um, probably me and him are good. I think what we have planned right now is that me, him, and uh, Felix, or we have another guy in mind, are going to film like a bunch of shows together and do like a Johnny and Gene show reboot. Maybe like a quick 10 episode thing, something like that, and then put it out. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. good. That's a good idea. Yeah, something There's, like that. You guys made money with that before, right? Fuck yeah. Yeah, I bet. 
Yeah. I bet. Did you have sponsorships and shit, or was that all views? No, Manscaped, we had fake Viagra pills. We had all kind of shit. We almost got liquor companies. We were the first ones out, so everybody's, like, jumping on it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's good, man. Like I said, I wish you luck with that, too. I've spoken yeah. to John. You know, I don't have any problem with John anymore. Right. He seems like a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. He's so what? Huh? He's a good guy. He is. He tries. You know, he put a lot of us on, bro. I'll be honest with you. He put most of these guys that are on the shows. He kind of, like, put them on. You know what I mean? To be honest with you. Well, yeah, he has that that ability, man. He has a big fucking audience, you know. People, whether people love him or hate him, they watch him. You know, it's just the way it is. So, bro, if you if you really look at it, like as many as people hate me, they love me because look at all the views I get. So, how much can you really hate me? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, that's true, bro. Yeah, like, I, bro, well, I look at it the same way. It's like, yeah, I don't give a fuck if you like me or hate me as long as you're watching. I don't give a yeah. fuck. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. So what are your plans for the future and, and as far as your personal life? You got other business things? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to open up. I'm opening up yeah, I'm opening up a tiny grocery stand, basically, something like that. It's um, a food truck, like a nice one. And I'm going to do like a New York style tiny sausages. And, um, you know, I still got the wash. So I'm just trying to get my hands in different things. My book is selling like crazy. Um, that's the plan I really have because my original version um, it's in the hands of actors and they believe that it should be a TV show. 100%. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Fucking right. Yeah, I think it they should They believe be. it. <laughs> so, hey, FBS, you gotta understand. I have so much more I could add in. That book is 10%. You think about all the crews in Howard Beach that we came up together. You could add, add it into the show. You could start doing this crew that, you know, there's so much and they know that we could do all of that. So he's really presenting it. People are very interested in, they got, uh, people got back to him saying, we are definitely interested in this. So I think that, um, you could see me on a Netflix or prime or something TV show coming with that book. So instead of some shit like Gravesend, have a real series about real. like Howard beach. Yes. And it would be like not cheesy acting like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it would yeah, be yeah. like, you know, that was horrible acting. I'm saying, but if you get like, I, like, for instance, I would ask to play another character. I wouldn't play myself, but if we did something, let's say, on another guy, I would ask to play that person or somebody that could really be a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Make it look real, you know? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And you could have, I mean, all these guys. There's a lot of guys on here from Howard Beach and Ozone Park and shit. Absolutely. That could, that could uh, you know, t tell stories and stuff on there. Absolutely. That would be great. No? Absolutely. I got the throwback you know? on you. True Religion, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope. <laughs> That's what's up. Um, yeah, we're, like I said, you know, this wasn't meant to be like a formal interview. We're just going to bullshit a lot of the right. time. But I got one other question for you, man, because I wonder this because I think about my life and there's so much shit I would have changed. Bro, if you could go back, honestly, to like when you were a fucking kid and do it all over and make all the right choices, you know, do good in school, go to fucking college, start a normal life. Would you or, or are you happy with uh, your experiences and shit and where you are now? No, I can't say I'm happy with it, but I mean, the way it turned out, like now, I guess it's okay, but, um, you know, I definitely would have liked to do it differently. I mean, who wants to be in jail for 13 years and be on parole and probation since you're 18 and I'm 39 and, you know, it's just been a nightmare. You know, I've been owned by the system since I'm a kid, so I definitely wouldn't want that. I, I never traveled anywhere. I was never allowed to leave the country, so, you know, I never did anything in my life except for street shit, you know? Yeah, I feel you. So yeah. you were, you did, you did a total of 13 years? Total of 13 years. I gave the system 21 years. With parole, probation, and jail, I gave him 21 years. And you're how old? 39? 39. Jesus. Yeah. That's so, crazy. Did you ever yeah. think when you were running around the fucking streets of Howard Beach that it would make you famous, all that shit you were doing? I mean, no. I just always knew that people glorified, you know, the mafia always. I just... I just didn't think it would blow up like this. You know, when I came out of jail and I heard about, because remember, Johnny Eli was close to my family, so he already had said, reach out to me when he comes home. He told my aunt, when Gene comes home, tell him to reach out to me. I didn't know about this YouTube stuff. I was down for six years. I came out and I seen him and basically Mike Francis doing it. You know what I mean? So he's like, yeah. listen, I'm going to get you on Vlad TV. I said, all right, I went on Vlad and that was it. People wanted to know about me. And I just went from there. And the, you got the book and everything. Yeah, everything, I mean it's yeah. it's crazy. Some people might not look at it that way, but you're you're famous. You're at least semi-famous, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I now I look at it like that because I get contacted by famous people. So it's like when they contact you and say, "Yo, I like your book," I'm like, "Oh shit, all right." <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. bro. Are yeah. you still the Chris Pacello of Tampa? 
Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, <laughs> right now, I, I mean, I was. I mean, but let's see what happens when I go back. <laughs> I'm right yeah, now. I'm sure you. Yeah. Oh, you you are? I didn't know that. Yeah. I'll be in Tampa oh, okay. next week. Yeah, right now I'm in St. Pete. That's where I was living with my girlfriend at the time. I'm not with her in in the same spot as her now, but I'm in St. Pete. I'm moving back to Tampa in like two weeks. Oh, okay. Um, so how far is that? 20 minutes. Oh, okay. That ain't bad. Yeah, it's like Listen, 20 minutes. I got to show you because I, I I need you to shout her out because she's been in here complimenting you, and I know she is your number one fan, Debbie McGaffin. So if you okay. give her a little shout out, bro, that would be dope. Yes, Debbie. Yes, Debbie. I speak to her on Instagram. Oh, you do? Yeah, I speak, she's a nice lady. Yes, I speak to her on Instagram. She I, on, on DM. Oh, that's what's up, man. That's yeah, good. she's a super nice lady. Yeah, yeah, she is. Uh, she, always, so, she always messages me, how you doing, how you feeling? You know, not, not, like just nice, you know what I mean, checking up on me. I have a lot of people like that, uh, a lot of people like that. You know, honestly, I met a lot of good people. It's funny how, you know, some people, I, I, especially for, for someone like you, you know, I, I'm sure it feels good to have people who uh, really actually are concerned and, and they don't want nothing from you. You know, they're just worried about you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's, you know, that came with the um, the Instagram. You know, let me be honest with you, Instagram, you have a connection with a lot of people. And uh, obviously, I have a lot of followers. But why they like me so much is because I have 60,000 followers, but I respond to everybody. I've never not responded to one person that messaged me. Really? Yes. Damn. Not once. Not I don't have the patience, bro. I do it. I, I, I need to know because I know these people are reaching out to me and they're like, Gene, you know, I'd love to talk to you. And I'm not a scumbag like that. I always answer them back. Hey, how you doing, man? It's not no fake message. It's really me. And they're like, wow, I can't believe you answer me. Nobody does on this. Like Mike Francis and them don't answer these guys. You know, I always answer everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's good, man. I give you credit for that. Um, yeah. Listen, I think Jeff has a bone to pick with you. The sit down with Jeff Nadu said, Gene, you were out of line calling out snuff. Um, snuff the the spider, the little don the little donut delivery boy. I guess Joey's partner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like I said, he's in the line of fire, so he's talking about all this. Here we are with Joey Moreno. You know, you know his little uh, you know his, his slogan. You know, he's talking about all this rat stuff. So you know, at the end of the day, he's in the line of fire now. He's gonna run his mouth about me, him, and uh, you know, the midget Joey Molina. If they're gonna run their mouth and talk about me and say things, then what do they think? They know I'm the worst on here. Everyone knows I have no filter. So if you're gonna come at me on YouTube and do that, you know what I'm gonna do. You know, so I mean, you're talking about me, saying things about me, respect the response. And he's his host, so everyone to call him, and he's running his mouth too. So I'm gonna fuck with him too. If uh, let me ask you, because I, I don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna I have no problem with Joey or anything, but what what is it that that started this? Was it something so, they said or? Yes, I didn't start that. So he basically said that uh, my mother was crying and begging in the court. And first of all, it was a bail hearing. It wasn't judge block. They have it all wrong. So it was a bail hearing during COVID, and my mother was on the screen. You know, if they do it when you're in COVID, everybody's on the screen that's there with you. That's yeah. all it was. So she just says it's ridiculous. Like he's getting remanded. That's all it was. That's all she said. And meanwhile, Joey Molino's mother was sitting with a priest at his trial. So, you know, I mean, I don't understand like, that that's okay. His mom was crying with a priest at his trial. But my mother, no. all, all Italians' mothers do that. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah. all, that's how we are. My mother was at every court date I ever had. I mean, I would just think, you know, that's, th there's nothing abnormal about that. But, but I know because of that story that came out or whatever when you first got violated a couple of years ago. I think yeah. I might have even said that about you once when I don't like you. <laughs> That's oh, yeah, I don't, something I, I don't care, but listen, at the end of the day, listen, this is what it is. But I'm just telling you what it is. My mother was there, but you know, she's been in my courtroom since I'm fifth. I've been getting locked up since I'm 15. She's been in the courtroom. You know what I'm saying? So she wasn't crying yeah. to the judge. She's used to me going to jail, but she was just like, This is bullshit. He's getting remanded. He's not even a bad guy no more. Why don't he get a bail? Why does Gene Burrell never get a fucking bail? You know what I'm saying? They never give me bail, uh, FBS, ever. Yeah. Well, you're fucking, you're like public enemy number one, bro. Isn't insane. Oh, uh, at that time. Oh, I never, God, bro, I never saw somebody like, considering you cooperated, what the fuck do you think it was that made them hate you that much, bro? The Johnny Just because you were a show. wild man? Oh, The really? Johnny and Gene show. They hated the fact that we came out and that we were glorifying things, hurting people, and people were loving us for it. You know, they're like, what the fuck? Like, these guys are becoming famous for hurting people. You know what I mean? So they didn't like it. Then they needed me for further cases. Um, and they couldn't felt like they couldn't use me no more. I don't know. Wow.
That's that was the beef basically. But I had remember my if my prosecutor was still there, thank God, because if he wasn't there on my first violation, if it was up to that fucking prick Keith Edelman, oh, I would have got five years. I would have got five years. That's the guy, that's yeah. the prosecutor that had it all uh, for you. Listen to me, he he's a good prosecutor, don't get me wrong, but he's just like the personality of a fucking chair. You know what I'm saying? Like he's just one way. I was with Lindsay and Nicole. They were great. You know, they were just down to earth, cool people. And we got along well. I didn't get along with him. So he, he became chief of organized crime. Only thing is that he respected my prosecutor, Lindsay. And she said, we're not frying Gene. He wanted to fry me. You know, he was looking for 60 months. Get the fuck out of here. Because of all the bullshit with the Johnny and Gene show and everything. Well, that's, that's something I try to tell people about, like, you know, uh, you guys who cooperated. Uh, people think that you spend the rest of your life protected by the government and you have handlers till the day you die. And I try to tell people that those fucking fed, they'd love to bust you all over again. They don't well, give a fuck if you help right. them. So I had a lady, I spoke to you about this on my show, on your show the last time, uh, Christine Myers. She was assigned to me when I became uh, a co-op, when I would start a violating. And she was literally flying down to Florida and questioning people, asking if I was, collecting debts, pulling guns on people. Like, it was almost comical. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was trying to build a case on me. Yeah. Like, they were sent, like, they were sent to investigate me, like, put him in jail. It That's was sick. Nuts, bro. Yeah, it was sick. You can't win for losing. You fuck, they, they try to lock you up, you you cooperate, and they try to lock, lock you up anyway. You can't right. win. Right. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, man, I'm hope I, I'm glad uh, that you're off paper and shit now, and you got your freedom a little bit. You can move around yeah. and do things. Um. So, so what else? I know there was there was one specific guy you wanted to talk about. We can we can uh, talk about him for sure. Yeah, Shaq is fucking crackhead. Listen, you know he's a nobody, but he he gets me so mad because like he just he knows he's doing it for attention, but he's like a nobody. Bro, this dude wears the same suit. You know that, right? He has that suit on for the last six months. This guy don't change that suit. <laughs> he looks, yeah. And he got it from the Salvation Army. You know, the Salvation did, Army suit, bro. He don't change it. But you know, he's just burning his mouth. You know, this dude was literally smoking crack with his mother. He had his own daughter on back page. Like, you know what I'm saying? And oh, you're gonna sit there. Yeah, he has his own daughter on back page. And you're gonna sit there and talk bad about me. Like, that's insane, bro. You know what I mean? It's just insane. I don't I don't, don't wanna I don't want to mention anyone in his family, but, but yeah, you know. it's horrible. I mean, and it's the things that he was doing, you know, and he talks bad about, well, he mentions everyone in anyone else's family. He don't care. You know, he talks yeah. about my girlfriend, this one, that one, you know what I'm saying? So he did it with my wife too. He started, yeah, you know, it's yeah. what it is. You know, you want to put right. things out there. You know, you would legitimately smoke and crack with your mother. That's a known fact. You got beat up on your TV. You got beat up on TV recorded by a homeless guy. It looked like bum fights. Literally. Well, while, while he had a dumbbell in his hand. Yeah. He still got beat up. Still got beat up. And you're sitting here talking about you do this and that. Now he takes these stupid little videos. He gets 11 views. He's in the fucking, I'm in New York City. You fucking asshole. Oh, my God. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I, I, would, oh. I would like to ask you what you'd do if you ever saw him, but it's better if you don't answer that question. Well, he would never, he would run from me. Everyone knows. I don't care what anyone says. I'm not trying to be a tough guy. He would run from me 100%. He would run. That's all he would do and call the cops like the rest of them do. That's it. That's it. Yeah, he um, he I, I like we talked about before the show, bro. He's just a hating motherfucker. He's he's, he's a, a monumental hater. failure on here, bro. And yeah. it drives him crazy. That's why yeah. he hates me too. You know what I mean? Yeah, because he'll never succeed. His show sucks. It's just that all he does is talk shit and puts up pictures. He's a cornball, bro. A guy has no life. Yo, he legitimately has no woman. He has no money. What's his life consist of? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Drugs. He has drugs. Nothing. I smoke more than I smell liquor than he makes in a fucking year. The guy has no <laughs> life. He has nothing. You know what I'm saying? I know, bro. He's a clown, man. Clown. A clown. Do, do you know, bro? Like on YouTube, when you you have a Google AdSense, like you and John did, whatever. If you don't, if you don't uh, hit the hundred dollar threshold, like if you don't make a hundred in one month, they don't pay you. Like if you make ninety nine dollars, YouTube don't give you that, right? Right. He told me once on the phone that for months he hasn't hit the fucking one hundred dollar <laughs> threshold. Bro, me and Johnny were getting me and Johnny were getting thousands a month from YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were getting some thousands a month, and with the endorsements, and with the bats and all that stuff. Me and him had a good racket going with that, bro. We really did. Yeah. Not yeah, no more. I, you told <laughs> me one time, I think, what you guys were splitting or whatever out of it. it yeah, was it was some. De- it was. It wasn't crazy money, but it was pretty good. And then plus, we were getting all the shows. You know, it, it, it was really blowing up, man. We would have been right up there with Sammy Gravano, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Not saying bigger than him, but right there with him. 
You definitely, you know, uh, like I said, you know, John obviously, you know, brings viewers and all that, but you definitely made the show better because, you know, uh, you're yep. Gene Barello and you have that fucking I don't give a fuck attitude and people right. love that shit. You know well, what I mean? that's why that's why everyone was saying it because uh, they says, you know, Gene, at the end of the day, when you go on, you get more views than most of them, all of them mainly. And I says, yeah, because I don't pretend to be something I'm not. I'm not a professional businessman. I was a street thug. I'm on YouTube and I'm still going to be the way I am. I'm not going to see it until I'm running for mayor. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not doing none of that. I'm just saying this is who I am. This is who I was. And if you ask me something, I'm going to tell you. And I'm not going to. I have no hair on my tongue. I'm going to say what I feel. And that's why people watch me. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Because you speak your mind. That's what I I've do. I never Same held shit, back. Bro. I never held back. You can't, bro. You can't. I'm, I'm like that. You can't be passive aggressive. That shit will eat you up. Yeah. I got to tell people how I feel. I can't fucking keep it hidden or secret. I can't. Yeah. I got to fucking come out and say it. Has any of these uh, past... Uh, you know, these people from, I guess, your uh, past YouTube life, like Lee Cole and stuff. Have any of these people reached out to you since you've been out? Yeah, you know, Lee Cole, he, he I don't understand. Me and him used to be buddies, bro, and I always talk about that. He's just such a two-faced, bro. He really is. He keeps attacking my cousin Anthony, which makes no sense. My cousin Anthony is 70 years old. He goes back to the old days with the real guys. You know what I mean? And, like, he don't even say, my cousin Anthony don't get involved in the YouTube stuff. He don't even say anything to anybody. You know, he's just literally talking, he's telling stories, and this guy just keeps on attacking him for views. And meanwhile, these guys are from Texas, his co-stars from, like, Alabama, somewhere in the fucking woods, and these guys are talking about mafia. It's, like, hysterical. Like, how I are like, you going to tell us about Howard Beach and Rosa Park? You're from Alabama. Like, give me I a know. break, bro. Well, I, I love the dude, James, because he, he's such a nice I guy. Know. But, yeah, the two of them talking Come about on. the mob is so fucking Come silly. On, I've said bro. it. Come no, on. I'm he saying didn't... as a person, he's a nice guy, but them yeah. talking about the mob is ridiculous. And it like, is. You, know, you hear the accents and stuff, and it's like, yeah, the fuck? yeah. Uh, and then you got Lee Cole who murders Italian names for a living. <laughs> he can't say a fucking Italian name for nothing, bro. This guy's the worst, bro. Holy he used shit. to call you. He used to call you Gene Boriello, bro. He can't say Chris Cognaca. He can't say a fucking name. Holy shit! Hooked on phonics worked for me. He's fucking guy. Holy That's shit. Crazy. Bro, I'm glad you brought up that name. Could you just for a few minutes for anybody who doesn't know about him, because he's an interesting character. Could you tell everybody about Chris? Chris Kignata, yeah. He was once my best friend, worst enemy, best friend. And um he was hands down uh pound for pound. I mean, I know I was getting a lot of messages the last time because they were saying, Oh, well, you know, I just listen. In our era, Chris Kignata was the toughest guy around. He beat everybody up. He'll shoot you, he'll stab you, he'll kill you. He was the all-around perfect weapon, and he went to war with the Queen's Fraction by itself. So you have to give the kid credit. You know what I'm saying? You have to. He, re he really went to war with them like that, huh? With us. Queen's Fraction. Banana Fraction, he was warring with us. He literally had us carrying guns, worried about coming outside. He, we had to worry. Damn. What, did he got any bodies? I mean, who knows, that kid. I know he was stabbing people in the head. He was just... Listen to me. I, I told a story one time. I went with him to Cherry Valley one time, right? We went to go get some sandwiches. I literally turned to the right for two seconds. The next thing I know, he's in someone's sunroof, beating the guy up, dragging him out the sunroof, stabbing him. I'm like, bro, I just turned my head for a second. This guy's already got me an attempted murder in a fucking robbery case, I think. That's how he was. You know, if you literally were with him, anything could happen. You know what I mean? Anything. And you, you just shot him, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I mean, they sent me to kill him. Yeah, I mean, it was a bad situation, but I just chose the mafia over him because I was chasing the life, you know? So you, you had every intention on killing him. You just, you wound up yeah. injuring him. And... Oh, yeah. Well, the first time I wasn't sent to kill him, the second time we were sent to kill him because he threatened to kill Ronnie G's kids. He said, I'm going to kill your kids when they come out of school. This is what he told the captain and cocked the gun in the phone. And that's when we, well, that's when we tried to kill him in his car. We thought we killed him. He was playing dead over the steering wheel. Yeah. So where'd you wind up shooting him? And his, we got him the first time I got him in his arm. The second time I shot his cousin in the car. We missed him and missed the target and got his cousin because my partner froze up. So were these attempted murders you had then when you when you cooperated? Yeah, I had a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. That was just uh, some of them. But I had other ones, too. I shot another kid in the park. I had another shoot. I had a bunch of shootings. Uh, uh, FPS. Yeah. So you you were looking at how much time, bro? Because a lot of people like to say you were looking at ten years. Well, from just from Florida, I was looking at ten years. I mean, yeah, from Florida alone, I was looking at ten years on my arm robbery in a jewelry store. Yeah, 
I mean, I had state, Florida, and federal. And if anyone knows how the feds work, I had a minimum mandatory of 15 to life. So my minimum mandatory was 15. Uh, Florida would go consecutive, and the state would go consecutive. I probably could have ended up with like 33 years, 34 years. Uh, if I blew trial, all life, you know, racketeer, all racketeering charges, you know. Remember, I'm a career, I'm a career criminal. I fall under, they could have get, with my federal enhancements, I could have got 22 years alone, just from the feds. 22? Just my, yeah, just from my federal enhancements with the third gun charge, career arms act, shootings. I would have a minimum mandatory of 15 with a recommendation of 18 to 22 years, plus Florida, plus the state. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's what I was facing, you know, and eleven mm -hmm. home invasions. You had eleven home invasions and about forty some armed robberies. Come on, bro! Like you know, this is different. You know, what I mean, arsons. <laughs> so you know, like, come on. You know, these guys ain't with me on crimes. I tell people that all the time. Like I was like a walking disaster, bro. Like I, I lost count when I was in the fucking profits. It was so many. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't even know all my crimes. I had like I admitted to like seventeen shootings. Like it was just out of control, bro. You know? Yeah. yeah. Well. Listen, you know, everybody knows Vinny Asaro passed recently. What was your uh, what was your relationship with him like, bro? So that bothered me. Um, I liked Vinny a lot. I didn't want to cooperate against him. Everyone knew that. I did not. Yeah, I had to because they know I was on wiretaps, obviously. Um, I liked Vinny a lot. I got along with him well. Uh, we, were, we were close. He taught me a lot. Uh, he was all for me. He was one of the main guys that wanted me inducted into the family. Um I definitely had the utmost respect for him, no matter what. You know, I get mad when people say, oh, he was this, he was a has-been, he was a broke. Bro, you're not saying that to him. That's first off. Second off, yeah, he got old, and, he, you know, he was a bad gambler. But at the end of the day, Vinny Asaro was a gangster's gangster. He was a legend in the banana crime family. He was a multimillionaire most of his life. He owned everything. He killed dozens of people. He was in on so many hits, and he was got straightened out in 1969, not in 78. Mm. You know, uh, he was a extremely vicious, feared, respected man. And every time I seen someone meet him, I didn't know him. They say this, FBS. It's an honor to meet you, Vinny. And these are other wise guys, captains, and I would see it with my own eyes. You know what I mean? So I know what he was. He will be a mafia legend, and that's it. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, yeah. I heard you talking about that yesterday on uh, on Johnny's show. Yeah, you know, I didn't right. know that about him that he was a gambler like that. But I've been oh, talking about God. these mob guys and the gambling thing. It blows my fucking mind, bro. Listen, he would call me. I'll go, Vin, what's up? He goes, Gene, I fucking lost again. I said, what, the track? He goes, yeah. So I was making a lot of money at the time. I didn't care. He's earned. People are scared. Remember, people are scared to deal with him because he's also a lunatic. So, yeah. you know, that also hurts people from wanting to deal with him. You know what I'm saying? Because he'll attack you in the middle of the street. So um, I would hook him up with money all the time, and he was just a gambler. He'd go to the track. He'd blow the money. You know, uh, then he, you know, sell his properties he had left. He'd blow that money. The Latanza Heist money, he told me he made 800000 He lost it all on the track. He got eight hundred from that? Got 800000 out of it. He lost it all on the track, he told me. Oh, my God. Is that crazy? He said I lost <laughs> it all nuts. gambling. Yeah, all gambling. And, you know, a lot of people don't know he's actually the one that helped kill Maury's Wiggs. Maury's Wiggs is on his property from the movie. Yeah, yeah. Maurice yeah. Brooks on his fencing company. That's where he was buried, on Vin's fencing company. Jesus. Yeah. That's nuts. Um, yeah. You, you never had anything like that, like any type of addiction to drugs or alcohol or gambling, did no, you? No, no. I'll, I'll gamble I like, but I was never – I never had – I'm not – Um, I'll drink here and there. I've tried party drugs when I was a kid, but I never got into it. I was more addicted to money. You know, I was chasing money and, you know, like the the, the reputation and all that stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's I wasn't with the way. drugs. Yeah, I wasn't with that stuff. You know, we'll leave that to stacks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll no, leave that um, to stacks. Smoke a crack. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He does a good job. He's got everybody covered. He, yeah, he does it. <laughs> um, somebody in here wants to know. They they said you have any uh, good Ronnie G stories. I'm sure you have tons. Hundreds. I mean, I I can tell a funny one real quick. Um. If Damn. anyone, you know, I was thinking about this the other day because at the end of the day, I know I cooperate against him, but I was like super close with Ronnie. That's a different level. We just had a fallout, but I know everything about that man. He was a legit tough guy, lunatic, and um, he's very particular about his cars. So when he has something, it has to be super neat. The nickels, he has a, a change basket that if you literally the dimes with the dimes and nickels with the nickels, he's just a fanatic with things. So I like that. Yeah, he, at the time, this is 2006. He had a blacked out limited 4150 all hooked up to the mat to the gills, you know, you could all customized. 
So we're driving in Lindenwood, and there's like nine Mexicans working on the on the street. And I guess he drove past them, and I think they shoveled some gravel and it hit the truck. So I never forget this. He pulls over. He's like, these motherfuckers. He pulls over, hops out the truck. I'm like, fuck. I hop out the car with him. He's walking towards them. He's ready to go after nine Mexicans. These guys starts walking towards them with shovels. All of a sudden, I pull out a two-shot Dillinger. <laughs> I got two bullets on me, right? I'm like, I got to save this guy. Because then you have him, I'm fucking dead. I pull out the two-shot Dillinger. The cock back. Bow, I fire. They all start running. We get back into the car. Ryan looks at me and goes, good, good move. Good move. I says, yeah, we were about to get fucking pummeled, motherfucker. My guy. <laughs> <laughs> These guys had shovels. Fuck. These guys had shovels. He's ready to go at them. We're ready to rush them. I got a little, like I said, two shot. I pull out, just fire at them. They all scattered and ran. Ronnie got back in the car and he's like, yeah, you just saved me. I says, yeah, motherfucker. Don't, don't do that ever again, bro. But yeah, you know, that was the funny That's story funny. to Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie was a fucking nut, man, you know? And, um... You know, like I said, a lot of things with him. He loved to go to Peter Lugas once a week. He had to go to Peter Lugas. Um, you know, he would always make uh, uh, the low man, like uh, like he would never pay. So always we had to pay. So one of us. So we used to hate going. So, he, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But he was cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard he, he wasn't scared of nothing, bro. Nobody. Nothing or nobody. Ronnie was a fearless guy. He was um, straightened out in 1994 for the guys that are into the mafia. You know, I know a lot of these years get messed up. I like to correct it. Ronnie was made 1994. He was one of the youngest guys inducted into the Bano family. Not ever, but one of the youngest. He was just the age of 24. Yeah. Wow. Would you say he was like a mentor to you? Yeah, absolutely. I was At one point, you could literally say I was his right-hand man. That's what's up. Yeah. And, and when does he get out? 28? 29, I think. 29 or 28, one of them, yeah. And Vinny Asara did what? What did, what did he get? Eight years, right? Yeah, he didn't do that. He did like three years. They let him right out. He was he was out in 2020, I think, because of COVID. Yeah, he didn't get no real time. They would try they tried to crucify him, but he was old. They let him right out. So he he died at home? He just died. Yeah, he died. I think I don't know if it was home. I think in the, I think so, 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 they said something happened with his hip. I don't know, and I think he went for surgery, and I think he died like that. I'm not sure. I just know I got 100 phone calls that Vinny's dad. He says, yeah, I heard this before. He told me this seven months ago. He wasn't dead. There's like, no, he's really dead. I was like, all right. Wow. Yeah. What do you think about uh, Messino dying? I'm going to be honest with you. So so we weren't fans of him, you know, my area. Um, Ronnie and them. Ronnie, he liked Ronnie G a lot, actually. Ronnie was on pastry duty with, with Joe Messino. He used to have to go there once a week and drop off pastries to him. Vinny and Sarah hated him, so basically I hated him because I mimicked them. You know what I'm saying? So he would they would tell me stories about him. Like he was like you know like a piece of shit. He was killing people, taking their businesses. He was doing a lot of fucked up shit. You know what I'm saying? So um, you know, and then he ratted. You know, as the boss, you know, you being a boss of the you know the family, you send such a horrible message by doing that. You know, we're on the bottom. We're looking up to you. You're literally wearing a wire at seventy something years old to save what? You know what I mean? Like you're already lived your life, you did one bid like four years back in the day, and then you should have went, I feel like he should have went out like a G. I'm going to be honest with you. I think those caliber guys are not supposed to rat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, boss, man. That's That's, that's crazy, different. Man. Like, I'm on the bottom. We're looking up at these guys. Like, you're literally like, you were the boss of all bosses. You were like a legend. You couldn't say his name. You had to go like this. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. I don't know. I, don't, I, I think that he should have went out. And just, you know, took his time. He was 70-something years old. What the fuck are you cooperating for, really? Honestly. Like, there's nothing. Yeah, well, well, when did he know. get out? Like, 2012, I think? 2013. 2013. And he died. Okay, so he had 10 years free. And he was living right in New York, we found out, bro. No, Ohio. Ohio. Oh, I thought he was in New York. Okay. Ohio. Yeah, he was in Ohio. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, crazy shit, man. All the, all the old guys, the old school guys, they're dying off. Yeah, uh, well, think about it. We're in 2024. If you were born in the 30s, you're a dinosaur right now. You know what I'm saying? You got, you know, you're born, yeah. you're an old man now. 20s and 30s and 40s, you're in your 70s and 80s, almost 90s, you know? Yeah, yeah, for real. You know, people don't, you know, make it that long. No. But what do you think about, Um, I got to ask you this. Uh, John Jr. is apparently coming out with a podcast. What do you think? Well, he, I mean, like, it, it's so funny because, like, uh, it makes sense. I don't know why he just doesn't do it already. He should have did it a long time ago. He was labeled a rat for like the last 10 years. I mean, why not? I mean, does it make a difference? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
He's, he's going to have. He's been labeled no good forever. Who even cares? He's going to be huge, though. He's going to have a fucking million subscribers. Absolutely. And, you know, he's going to put a ton of money into it. His son just fought Mayweather, bro. I mean, come on. That's pretty big. You yeah. know? Come on. That's, like, big. You know, as much as I can't stand that family, I mean, they are involved in big things, you know? Yeah, John Jr.'s got to be a multi-millionaire. Yeah, I think his house is, like, $7 million in Long Island. <laughs> and all the properties, you know? Yeah. Like, Listen, I he was... Like, yeah. He was, like, he was, a $7 million ranch. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, he 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 was always smart with his money, from what you know. Everybody says, you know, the way he invested well, in shit. Hey, want to hear a joke? What Jew isn't smart with their money? No, I'm joking. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking Jew. Leave it to you. Uh, let me ask you. Somebody texted me something. Um. Oh, uh, somebody asked about the the robbery with Ali Shades. Yeah. Um. And who the made uh, who the made guys were in the crew? In my crew, I, I guess so. Yeah, so the made guys in the Howard Beach fraction was I'll give you position. So Vinny at one time, Vinny and Sarah really don't understand. People don't understand that he was a captain on the committee, but he was really running the family with Tommy D. See, when Mikey knows appointed Tommy D, they wanted Vin to take the family. He said no. He, Tommy D took the family, and Tommy says you have to be my right hand man. You got to help me run the family. So he was a captain on the committee slash underboss, Vinny. Because he was literally running the family with Tommy DeFury. So in 2011 and 12 and 13 and 14, he was pretty much setting rules for the family and running the family with Tommy DeFury. So that was that, that position. So we had Vinny as the guy. Then his son, Jerry Asara, was a captain. Jerry Asara's acting captain was Jackie, or Sonny Zotto Body, and also Ronnie Gialonzo. Then you had um, another wise guy was Mike Palmacio, Mike Padavona, John Rangano. Those are the made guys in the Howard Beach fraction. Okay, good. Fat Sammy yeah. was Long Island. Johnny Phone Books was Long Island. Oh, and that's there it. You are. Okay, yeah. Tony Ducks wanted to know. As far as the Alley Shades robbery, I, I, I guess he's just looking you for the story. You went out. You went out. You can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Oh, fuck. There still? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me, bro? Oh fuck! What happened? I knew something. Well, happened leave, leave and come back. Leave and yeah, come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Great fucking show, if you ask me. <laughs> everybody, hit the like button, please. Donate if you would like, and thank you for everybody who has been donating. Debbie McGaffin, Alex Fajigadija, uh, Sally. Let's see, Antonino, Bobby Barbarian, Hey Now, JD Hopes. Thank you very much. Gene will be back, hopefully, and the show will go on. I got some more questions for him. And, and I know you guys want to know the answer to the Lee question. I'm going to ask him. Yo. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, we're, we're good to go then. Um, so that, people will kill me if I don't ask this question, okay? Uh, yeah. You know, I, I had the text from you that Lee – that Lee sent when he said he's going to pull up on you. Yeah. What do you, what's your reaction to that, bro? Make my audience laugh. I, mean, <laughs> I told him the same thing I told him the message. Says, I'm not 78 years old. You know what I'm saying like, you can pull up on me all you want. That's not going to be good for you. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't, I don't think he's dumb enough to do that. Honestly, I no. think, I don't think he is. I think so. I think he did it to Sammy, but he didn't realize his son was going to crack him in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? But uh, I don't think that'd be very small for him to roll up on me. I don't think so. No, just your temper alone. I think you'd wind I, up ac at least accidentally killing him. No, I think I would just take like if like if I had like a soft drink, I'd just smash him in the face with it, like you know, like or, or like you know, anything in my hand, like a food, just throw it in his face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just hit him in the face with something, just, you know what I'm saying? Just to uh, embarrass him because he won't yeah, do anything. Yeah, embarrass the shit out of him. Give him a wake. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm a fucking no he probably got those big parachute underwears too. You know, those big fucking old school fucking underwears, the fruit of loom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yo. laughs> I can picture fucking Gene Barello giving me a wedgie. You know? dude, dude, dude's got bed sheets for underwears. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> bro. Oh my god! You uh, you got a few minutes to take some questions? Yeah, absolutely. And I appreciate you uh, you giving us this time, man. And, and doing yeah, this, man, I appreciate it a lot. So, guys, uh, any questions for Gene? Put them in the chat. I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Uh, what are your What are your um, 
what are, are you staying well it's not really you might not want to tell anybody but you're staying away obviously from your actual apartment right yeah i can't go near that yeah I'm, i have to stay away until the case is over yeah you're staying with a friend or something no i got a little place i grabbed just for the meantime oh that's good yeah okay, good um common sense 499 he said if you threw food in his face he would love you he don't turn down free food <laughs> <laughs> that's true Definitely true, and he'll, mur and he'll murder a name real fast. That was Gene Parello. He came and talked. Yeah, Bore Boreello, yeah. Boreello. <laughs> yeah, that's funny as fuck. And, and I think he used to call Bobby Boreello Borello. So he just got them backwards. Yeah, he can't say no one's name right. Any Italian name he just got, he got 100 bodies with those names. I swear to God. <laughs> He's the worst, bro. Oh, my got God. 100 bodies. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, let me see something here. Oh, have him tell the Ali Shade story. I think that's what we were getting to a minute ago. Oh, the Ali Shade story. Yeah, I um, I actually didn't know who it was robbing. I just knew it was a gangster. Um, they had told me he was gonna walk out of a nightclub with seventy five thousand in a briefcase, and I was like twenty years old. Me and my partner Bobby, and we got the tip. We sat on him. Uh, he pulled into a, uh, a driveway up in the driveway. I had a ski mask on, a pistol, hat. You couldn't see me, and um. I waited for him to get out of his car. When I got the car, I hopped on him, put the gun to him. He wouldn't give me the money. I started hitting him with the gun. Uh, I was debating on shooting him. And then his wife came out with a, a shotgun and pointed at me. I fired that way. And then I got out the yard. I never got the money. But he That's knew it was you. Huh? He knew who you were? No, 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 no. I found out the next day who it was. And I was like, oh, fuck. I was like, yeah, we jumped uh a little too high here. You know what I mean? I didn't know it was that person. We just knew it was a gangster. We didn't know it was that guy, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, that's uh, why you survived it? Because the, the streets didn't know, really? Yeah, nobody knew. I mean, nobody knew except for, like, my friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody knew. They would look a high and low for the person. You know what I mean? This is like when the when the uh, Genovese family was, uh, you know, always strong. But that would have been a death sentence for me, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Without a yeah, doubt. Yeah, 100%. And that goes to Miss Campy Wrong's question right here. She said, were you ever afraid you might get whacked? Yeah, I thought I, I should have been killed multiple times. I mean, there was a few attempts on my life, obviously, about three, four times. But um, there was a few times where I, I said, you know, I crossed the line and uh, maybe they're going to, you know, deal with me over it. But, you know, Vinny liked me a lot. So that's what played a lot of part. And Vinny and Ronnie liked me a lot. And uh, I don't think they'd ever let that happen to me, you know? Yeah, I feel you. Uh, well, it's good, I guess, right? You wouldn't be here today. Shit. Yeah. Um, Greenlit LA said, was Chris Cognata with... How do you pronounce it? Cagnata? I don't want to be like Lee. I, I'm not, I have no problem you're with telling you, man. You're saying it a lot better, believe me. It's Cagnata. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cagnata, yeah, okay. Was, that, did he, was he with anyone, or was he always a lone wolf? Well, his aunt was um, Charles Caniglia's girlfriend. So, his aunt Donna, who Ronnie shot, and Jerry. Jerry and Ronnie shot Donna Cavacanti for cracking a bottle over um, Jerry Asaro's head. Uh, Jerry Asaro's dog's sister's head. So, um that they, they they were sent to kill her and they shot her up in a bar stool. So Chris always had resentment towards them because of that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So he was basically around, you could say, Charles Caniglia, but, I mean, Chris was taking care of Charles Caniglia just before he died. Really? In jail. Nobody was sending Charles money no more. He, he, I was on the... I, when me and Chris became cool again, he was actually um, calling... Chris kicking out his phone and we were talking to him and he was saying how his brother and them fucked him over and then no one sends him money. No one takes care of him. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. An old timer like that, too. What the fuck? No, and they no even one leave him hanging. Him. Yeah, no one takes care of him. Uh, Chris Cagnato was actually the only one taking care of him, sending the money. You think that's what leads a lot of guys to flip, man, when they get locked up and they get cut off? That was my shit. Yeah, I, they wouldn't pay my lawyer. I asked for a federal attorney. The guy's worth 80 gazillion dollars. You know what I'm saying? You couldn't get me a federal attorney? Like, give me a fighting chance? Because these federal attorneys want a lot of money, uh, FBS. It's not like a state lawyer. When you have an organized crime case, these guys want a hundred thousand plus. You know what I mean? Some of them, some of them start at three fifty, like like start at three fifty. You know what I mean? Like, listen, your case is high profile, organized crime. I'm gonna need three hundred thousand and half up front. That's a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, honestly speaking, if they would have paid for the lawyer, you think you would have just taken the case? Well, not only that, I my big thing was this, and I don't lie, and I tell everybody I was. I was willing to take twenty years for everything. 
Anything past that, I was pissed off, but it was way past that. So I was saying, I will take 20 for everything. And my lawyer's saying, they're not going to give you 20 for everything because they want you to rat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's, they're that's not going to give you what you want. They're going to say 40 years and 35 years because they want you to cooperate. They know you know everything and you're involved in everything. So they're not going to give you that, you know? So yeah. I was yeah. fucked. After Vinny beat that trial, I knew I was done. They were never going to stop. After he won that Latanza and they knew I was the last guy to do crimes for him, they never would have stopped. They would have gave me a thousand years. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I get yeah, it. You know, they you know. never would have stopped. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. uh, Tony Hansom wants to know, um, he said, great show, FBS. Gene, do you have any stories of you guys doing business in Flushing? That's where I was born. Flushing Queens? I mean, yeah. I knew a lot of people out there, but um, no, I really didn't do business out there. Um, uh, we didn't. Ha there was mob guys out there, but we didn't have no dealings with them. Okay. Uh, Stop Flexing says, was Ronnie G a raging lunatic 24-7? Yeah, that's why me and him got along so good. We were the same person, bro. As we had too much of the similar ways. Two mm -hmm. hotheads, uh, resort to violence with everything. It was just the problem, you know? That's, you know... It's what it, we were kind of bumping heads too a little bit because we were just two hotheads. Well, that's the thing about a guy like you. You know, you you are going to end up in that life just because you grew up in Howard Beach because you're you're a wild man. That's you know? it. And they can use you for shit for everything, and that's what it was. It was great to have a guy like me. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to do nothing. You just sit back. I take care of everything, and I was chasing the life. So, you know, Ronnie didn't have to do nothing. You guys just had to just get it. I just bring him his money. You know what I'm saying? He had it made. Do you think that Vinny uh, Asaro ordering that arson was one of the dumbest fucking things he ever did? Yeah, I, I mean, he wanted me to kill a janitor. I, we could go into stories all day. I mean, I was, you know, I was going to kill a guy that sweeps up floors because he put his hands on him. You know what I'm saying? I ended up beating the guy with a billy club. They got the order to him, <laughs> thank God. You know what I mean? He wanted me to kill the guy. The guy's a fucking janitor. We got to kill a janitor? He's like, yeah, he wants me to kill him. I'm like, all right, I ended up beating the guy up with a billy club. And told him, exact words, Vinny goes, you make sure you tell him. You ever disrespect our people again, we'll fucking kill you. I says, all right. I had to tell him exactly those words. You know what I mean? So to make him happy, you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was like that. Crazy, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> and funny shit, though. I love this. This yeah. show is going better than I thought. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Gene, who gave you the toughest fist fight in your life, says Dave. Well, you know, this is a funny thing because I was talking about just the other day, and he's not like a known guy, but I have to say it because he had like the most one-on-one -on -one fights I think ever in like the history of Howard Beach. It was my friend Johnny McCurdy. This kid, I think, fought everybody. He might have had 120 one-on-one -on -one fist fights. He wasn't a killer, a shooter, stabber, but he'll fight anybody. He actually fought me one-on-one. -on -one. He beat me. I was younger, and he beat a lot of guys. But um, I, I, uh, for the most part, uh, I lost to him. I lost a bunch of fights. You know, I didn't win. A, I, I won and I lost. But Johnny McCurdy was. A great fighter growing up. Um, my friend Berger was a great fighter. Um, the toughest guy I ever fought was probably in prison. I fought this guy that looked like uh, the guy from Green Mile, um, the big guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that was probably him. His name was Ra. So, uh, you know, Ra, I would have to say. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Um, let me see what else we got here. Did Gene know Dom Sakali in the streets or just recently? I met him a few times. So, funny story. Me, Mike Palmacio, and all of us were out. This is right before, this is probably like 2003, I want to say. Um, and we, Mike Palmacio was straightened out, just got straightened out like six months. And Dominic Scali was a skipper already. And he's in the club with Ace, Anthony Aiello. Ace is a fucking nut through Middle Village. Real tough guy. And we don't know. We're about to fight with them. We have no idea. Mike Palmacio's in Dominic. They're about to get into a fight. Sure enough, guy comes over and goes, bro. He's on the same side. They're like, what are you talking about? Mike's going. He goes, bro, he's did these are skippers and May guys with the Banos families. Mike Pomace is like, oh fuck. And everyone's like, oh shit, we're about to kill each other. It was Dominic Sicali and Ace. Because Ace was on record with Do um reported to Dominic. Dominic was a Bronx guy. Ace was a Queens guy, but they put him with the Bronx. Ace was a Raven lunatic. He's in jail serving for murder. He was a, one of the toughest guys in Middle Village. And that was Dom's main hitter. And we about to brawl with them, and we had no idea that it was the same people. That's when we met him. That was the first time I met him. Yeah, so you got, a you got a friendship with him now, right? We've been friends, yeah, for a while. We just I was on probation, so we didn't talk about it, you know? He he seems like uh, like he really cares about you. Yeah, he's cool. I talk to him all the time. Dominic's a good guy, you know? I get along yeah. with him very well. That's good. Um, Haunted Ghost Tube Dana said, franchise the food truck business into the panhandle. 
The what? The what? She said you should franchise the food truck business into the panhandle. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna make it to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do like a whole like New York style tiny sausage stand. It's gonna be. I have a big stand. It's not like a little bullshit one. It's gonna be like the real like New York shit. You know what I mean? Like the like you see at the feast. It's gonna be like a good one. That's good, man. That's, yeah, it's gonna be popular there too. Without a doubt. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yes. NS Public Horror. What the fuck? Uh, ask him where the best bars, Tampa, St. Pete, or, or Clearwater. Where are the best bars? Uh, I like Hyde Park in Tampa. They're the meat market area. Oh, that's that's called the meat market. That spot. That's a lot of spots I like. Um, St. Pete has a lot of nice stuff in downtown where I used to live. That whole strip central. There's everything over there on central. I mean, just lines of bars and everything. It's just party. It's hot out all the time. So it's always popping. All right, that's what's up. Uh, yeah. Stevie F said, were there any Jewish associates in Gene's time or before? Yeah, I had a best friend. I still speak to him to this day, Ricky Kessler. Oh, actually, he's probably pound for pound hands, toughest guy around. Uh, Ricky Kessler. Ricky Kessler used to beat everybody up. Really? Oh, yeah. Ricky Kessler used to fuck everybody up in the neighborhood. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I don't even know if I put that question up. When I, Oh, sorry, Stevie F. There you go. Um Tony Duck said, Gene, were you pissed that Ronnie G knocked you down to get straightened out? Um, yeah, I didn't know exactly what he did. Vin kind of told me what he did. So I couldn't say anything because uh, Vin says, uh, we got to wait because Vin was trying to get me done. And Vin says, I'm getting locked up. If we don't get you done now, you're going to be stuck because the structure's getting locked up. So you got to wait for a new boss, a new structure, or you can't get straightened out. I was like, all right. And then he went to Ronnie to get it done. And Ronnie, like I said, Ronnie says, I don't want him on my paperwork. I need him right now. If he gets straightened out, he goes on my list and he can't hang out with me no more. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm with the guy every day, 24-7. So that was his excuse, you know, whatever. That was the reason why. So he it's didn't like, do it because of anything you did wrong. I mean, that was, a, I, I mean, you know, I've heard rumors also that, you know, I was knocked, not knocked down, but they backed up because they were scared to give me that power because I was so wild at one point. I was like uh, really out of control. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, I mean, it probably... Uh... I don't know, bro. You, you got to admit, you're a bit of a cowboy. It might yeah, they were getting a little. They were getting a little aggravated with me. Yeah, you know, I was getting a little out of hand. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I was getting way out, of, way out of hand, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, don't rob drug dealers no more. Okay, all I'm doing is robbing drug dealers. Don't sell drugs no more after you rob them. I'm doing that too. Don't do this. Don't do that. How could they expect it. you not to with all the money in it? Bro, it sucks because they don't want it. And I'm like, bro, you're already a millionaire. Like, we're trying to make money. Like, these guys got a lot of money. We're going to take it. They're like, oh, this drug shit. Blah, blah. You know, they were complaining about that. And then all the broad daylight shit I was doing and just running, you know, they were just, you were getting mad. They're like, this ain't the 80s, you know, calm it down, you know? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, let me see. Um, don't give a fuck no, uh, anymore. Wants to know, wasn't John Jr. closer to Charles Koenig rather than John Koenig? He had Charles hiding in bedroom that body bag story oh yeah mikey mikey scars told the story about um i guess john jr met up with with uh charles carniglia and 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 uh, charles brought somebody with him I, I can't remember who it was and john said to, to no 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 I'm, I'm fucking up no that was joe watts forget it i don't even know this story yeah charles Can oh time. anything with charles Canigla, i believe <laughs> Charles Kennedy was a fucking psychopath, so I don't put nothing past that guy. So if anything with him with killing someone, I believe it. You know, any story that was told about him murdering someone, it was true. That's all you got to know. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think the story was uh, Joe Watts came to meet uh, John Jr. And um, John Jr., Joe Watts brought somebody. And John Jr. said, if I would have known you were going to bring him, I would have brought another body bag. Something like that. Mikey Scars told that story. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. And a lot of people don't talk about this. And I'm not putting that out there. But Joe Watts was labeled a rat for a long time. I mean, I don't know if people know that. He was labeled no good for a very long time. I don't know, like, you know, if people talk about it or not. But, you know, a lot of people were saying that he was a cooperator for a long time. And no one just could prove it. But that was always the rumor. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I never heard that. And I certainly don't know that to be true, but. Well, you know, yeah, I'm serious. That was always a rumor. Wow. Yeah, that was always a rumor that he was cooperating. That was a rumor for years. And if you talk to guys that were really in the Gambino family, they all thought he was a rat. They were just scared to say it because he was a fucking, you know, killing fuck, you know? Oh, yeah. When I yeah. Out. Um, uh, Danny Green wants to know if you were ever locked up with any Boston guys. Yeah, Anthony Arellata. Oh, you were locked up with Arlotta? I was with Anthony Arlotta in jail. Yeah, sure. 
Were you ever on this show when he was on? I think you might have been, but I'm not sure. A- Anthony was on our show. Anthony came on the Johnny and Gene. Oh, he did? He got 700,000 views with us. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You we were did pulling those kind of views, bro? 700,000 views me, him, and Anthony got. Holy shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what That's I'm saying. We were getting big views, bro. Me, him, Anthony, and Bobby Luis got down together. And Johnny, we got 700,000 views. Yeah, that's that's nuts. I didn't know that. Somebody said he's not from Boston. He's actually from Springfield. But I, I sorry, I don't know. Same difference. I don't fuck. You know, that's with that crew. Whenever you ask me, I'm not from Boston. I'm from Massachusetts. So I'm like, all right. I thought it's the same thing. I don't know. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I used to make the same mistake about yeah. it, bro, Boston. But, yeah. Um, any dealings with Russians in Brighton Beach? Yeah, well, I used to get fake money off them, but they're shiesty. I don't like them. You know, really, I really didn't. I'm not that I don't like them. They just. They do fucked up shit. They do that women trafficking and all that shit. I really didn't like to get involved with them. You know, they they they, they operate fucked up. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess I understand that. Uh, yeah. Listen, Gene, man, I don't want to keep you on all night, bro. I, I uh, I, I think I got through all the questions. I want to thank you for doing this, man. This is a really great show. You were yeah. on for an hour, so thank you, man. Yeah, no problem, Fabulous. And I'll see you again. Don't worry. Next time, I'll come on yeah. again for you. All right, sounds all good, right. bro. I'm looking forward to it. Hit me up. All right, brother. Take care. Uh, all right, peace. There you go. I felt bad. I didn't want to keep him on all night. Uh, that was good, man. I, I appreciate Gene doing that. That was a lot of fun. I'm sure you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly did. I didn't know how long he was going to stay on, so that was good. We had an hour and, and you know, almost an hour and four minutes. Good shit. Uh, thanks a lot. What the fuck? What do you mean, Robert B? What? He went off too quickly? That seems to be happening on my show when I have interviews. Uh, um, people were asking uh, questions about Angel and her daughter and stuff. Um, I, I know there were supposed to be jokes about chicken pot pie and all that. There's, It's disrespectful. There's no fucking way I was going to uh, ask him any of those questions. You know what I'm saying? I, I, uh, I told you yesterday, I have no desire to bring people on here to trash Angel. I don't need to do that. If I want to trash Angel, I do a fucking fantastic job uh, at it all by myself, you know. Uh, but I don't even care to right now. Uh, Keith, no problem, bro. Um, Satone, I always liked that kid. That's Gene, man. You know, a lot of people hate him, but there is something likable about the guy. You can't deny it, you know. And, and I'll tell you what it is. It's, um, oh, I know you did, Miss Campy Wrong. Thank you. Uh, she even texted me and said, don't, don't ask, don't put up this one question. I looked at it and it's about Angel and her daughter. Get the fuck out of here, dickhead. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, fuck me. What was I talking about? Oh, was that it yesterday? Uh, no, nah, I, I don't know what it was anymore. God damn it. I fucking, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it was good, man. It, it, it turned out well. I hope I, I got to all your questions and you got, uh, <clears throat> you know, you got the answers you were looking for. Thank you, John DeLong. What do you mean, Robert B? Don't ever say that, bro. What do you mean? Oh, you asked your question. Oh, Robert B. I'm sorry. What the fuck were they? Did I miss them? Oh, shit. I'm, I'm seeing it now. Uh, well, I think, I mean, I think his answer would be, I, oh, you might have asked in another one about whether or not, uh, you know, or, or how he feels about uh, John exaggerating. I think, I think he's spoken about that before. You know, John is his friend, so he's never going to say anything bad about John, you know, and, and I don't think that's where you, what you were looking for. But um, I asked somebody, it might have even been Gene, that question on here before, and he said something like, you know, a lot of them exaggerate and stuff. You know, it's, uh, it is what it is. Uh, but, but, you know, the, the shit we used to say about A-Light and, and the shows we used to do and the way we used to attack them, you know, A-Light was like the guy then who we felt like was exaggerating or bullshitting. But since then, I mean, we've gotten fucking Anthony Ray Mundy, Danny Trio, you know what I mean? And there's been a couple of others. Jeff Nadu will tell you about a whole bunch of people that, that want to come on here and just make up a whole fucking backstory, you know, and, and, and crimes they didn't commit and all that shit. So uh, John isn't even one of the worst offenders at this point anymore. Um, let me see. Uh, get back down here. 
it seemed like he probably would have stayed on. Yeah, he probably would have, but you know, it's uh, I always feel bad. You know, I'm you know these guys do this shit for nothing. You know, so it's like I'm I'm always considerate of people's time. You know what I'm saying? Plus, like he said, he'll be on again. So why do it all now? Uh, next week, by the way, you know, I do plan on having another interview, and uh, one that might surprise you a lot. I don't know for sure. We're going to see, but I think, I think. Robert B., I'm so sorry again, man, that I didn't get to your question. I used to get fake money from Russians, also hundreds and 20, to, uh, 100 for 20. Then I set up a four brick deal with them and Italians. I was losing my mind thinking one of them crews were going to rob me. LOL, made 7K a brick. Uh, you're lucky. You, I would have been worried one of them was going to kill me, especially when it comes to the Russians. But that's what's up. 7K a brick, not bad. Um, Gene is awesome. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. I'd hang with him anytime. Yeah, I, I think that's what I was going to say, by the way. Uh, the reason people like uh, Gene is because even if, you know, there's certain things about him you don't like, or even if you... You don't like that he's a rat, whatever it is. Um, the dude, uh, he, he has no filter. And he tells you how he feels. Same way I do. You know what I mean? So you always know you're going to get some exciting shit. There's never a boring Gene Borello interview. And he knows that. You know, he knows that shit. So who knows? Maybe he'll go back and do the Johnny and Gene show. Maybe he'll do his own thing. I don't know. But see... With Gene, like, it's easy. If you notice the difference between me today and me on Friday with uh, Andrew D. Donato, it's because I have a friendship with Gene and I speak to him regularly. So it's just like talking to, you know, Gunsmoke or somebody on here. You know what I mean? Uh, when, when I don't know a guy, or I'm, 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 I don't know the story 100%, so I'm trying to keep questions in my head or whatever it may be. It makes it a lot more difficult. So I, I love these types of interviews. Gene is open and honest. He is. That's right, Miss Campuel. <laughs> Jeff Nadu, what's up, bro? You you uh, well, you disappeared after you you made the comment about snuff. Trust me, guys. I was not. Um, I didn't want him saying anything disrespectful about Joey, <laughs> well, you know, at all. Uh, he didn't really, so that's good. But I, I probably would have asked him not to. Uh Hold on. Gene just texted and said Stax is doing something on me already. <laughs> thank you, Jason, Mike, Sell, and uh, Carlos. Thank you, thank you. Now, Nadu, grab the link and clear the record. It'd be good if Nadu comes on now if he wants. Antonino, $5, another great interview. Is that one new? I think it is. Thank you, bro. Did I get to all of them? I'm going to read them all now. I read Common Sense. Sally, $15, looking forward to a good show. Match. I know I shouted your names out, but I didn't read the, you know, Alex Fajigadija. Match Sally with five to spare. Match the five. There you go. Debbie McGaffin, $20 super sticker. Thank you. Uh, Antonino, twenty dollars matched should be another great interview. Uh, I hope you uh, you, you still think so. <laughs> I hope you think it was a great interview. I do. Bobby Barbarian, great show, five bucks. Thank you. Hey now, ten dollars match for top uh, top notch content as usual. Sup, Gene? JD hopes FBS, great show. Thank you for the entertainment. Thank you, sir. Bobby Barbarian, forty. Uh, I'm sorry, four ninety nine. Great show indeed. Appreciate you, man. Common Sense, $4.99. That one I read. <laughs> Tony Hansen, member for two months. Great show, FBS. Up. Oh, that one I read. Okay. Antonino, $5. And I just read that one. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, 235 people left. Let's see if... Uh... Yeah, yeah, Common Sense. You reminded me. You were talking about why people like Gene. Thank you, bro. I didn't see it right away, but yeah. Angel's going to have her hands full tonight. Gene, Rob. Uh, Gene, common sense, a mustache, Pete, uh, may be a part of her opening tonight. Why? Nah, Gene, fuck no. He doesn't know Tony Pizza. He probably knows who he is from here, but I'm going to drop the link and see if Nadu or something wants to join. Let's see what happens. Uh, 
Just so everybody knows, my Cash App is, is fully available and, and, and waiting for donations. So is my Venmo and my PayPal and even my Google AdSense account if you want to send Super Chats or Super Stickers. Uh... All right. I don't know if Jeff's even going to join. I'm just throwing the link out there. We'll see. No, nah, nothing. Yeah, I didn't want him. You know, I wouldn't have had him on here talking shit about Joey. Uh, but the snuff thing, yeah, I guess, you know, he did make the comments. Look, you never know with these beefs who started what. You, you don't really know, you know. <clears throat> it could be Gene. It could be Joey. According to Gene, it's Joey. I'm sure Joey would say it was Gene. It's whatever, you know, but I, I think Joey's just going to do his thing and, and only mention it when necessary anyway. Uh, I don't think Jeff's coming on. Albaz, why even say that in here? Like, What made you think that was a good idea? <laughs> Fucking Albaz. The fuck? Delete that comment, please, somebody. Um, what else we got, guys? Oh, 22 years clean and sober, Robert B? Oh, bro, congratulations, man. Congrats to you, bro. That's great. Redheaded Stepchild Show, I like Gene. He's an open book. Yeah, he is. He is. I told you. That's the same fucking, uh, the same, um, the way I try to do things, even from the beginning. You don't have to go looking for shit on me. I'll, I'll tell it all to you. I don't care. If it's embarrassing, if it's whatever, I don't give a fuck. People keep putting up pictures of that, that thing that took place on the 4th, my face all bloody. Up. I put it up first. Who? What makes you think I give a fuck? <laughs> I took those videos down simply because I was out of my mind that night, and I probably said some shit I shouldn't have said. Uh, you know, but I don't care about that shit. But people, they, they still think they're getting satisfaction. I, I, I told you, the good, the bad, and the ugly, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. You know what I mean? And Gene's the same way. He don't care. He'll tell you if some shit's embarrassing. Doesn't bother him. It's probably why I get along with him so well. But I figured you guys would enjoy seeing him tonight. And I got to say, that was the longest interview I think he's done since he's been out. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even think he was on John's show for that long yesterday. So that was good. He does, Dave. He does. Um. Oh yeah, that pisses them off, bro. Uh, Angel, oh, I read that one. Let me get down here. Was Gene talking about Hootie earlier? I don't think so. Stacks is a clown. Guy's a street urchin. Yes, exactly. Uh, Anthony was a serious, serious guy. Who are we talking about? Anthony? Who? Ruggiano? Arlotta? Which Anthony? Oh, Arlotta is my boy. I uh, know him a long time. Yeah, I know you know him, Danny. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. He's a good dude. Uh, <clears throat> I haven't talked to him for a few months, but yeah. Uh, so that's it. I guess uh, Jeff can't grab the link. That's fine. Whatever. I just, I thought he might want to come on and, uh, you know, say whatever he had to say about uh, this thing with Gene and Snuff. It's all good, man. I'm uh, I'm ready to go anyway, honestly. I think it was a good show, and why keep it going and fuck it up now? You know what I mean? So I'm out. Thank you guys for everything. I appreciate you, everybody who donated. You guys are awesome. I'm not that far away, guys. I'm not that far away. If I have a good show tomorrow and make some money, I think I'll uh, I think I'll be all right as far as my paycheck for next month. I'm, I'm actually very, very close. So your donations mean a lot. Because if I make it this month, I'll be shocked the way it's been going. So thank you. Thank you, Jesse. I believe Jesse's coming on now, right? Thank you, War. Scam Do is driving on highway. Gotcha, gotcha. Scam Do is busy. Scam Do, you DV boy. <laughs> Come back on a little later on. I might. Let's see, Tony. Maybe I will. For now, I'm going to end it. Thank you guys for everything. I love you all. And until next time, salute.